Hello everyone. Architecture in marketing mix modeling. As you know, we are getting more and more granular questions when it comes to marketing mix models. And I think it's very important to spend enough time to understand how you should be designing your marketing mix modeling project in order to achieve all the deliverables that are requested from you and address all the business questions that you have agreed upon with the client. That's why I'm calling this marketing mix modeling architecture. Designing the right project in order to achieve successful delivery is very important in any marketing mix modeling project. And in order to be able to design your marketing mix modeling project and to determine the optimal structure or the optimal architecture of your project, it's very important that you consider three elements. The project deliverables, the project objectives, and the business questions from the projects. A typical marketing mix modeling project would have what we call generic deliverables, generic objectives, generic business questions, and also specific ones. For example, if we focus on the generic business questions or the generic objective of a project, we can cite determining the main sales drivers, understanding and computing the ROI, measuring the contribution of each channel, optimizing budget, determining the diminishing return curves and the marginal return on investment. All these could fall under the umbrella of generic objectives or generic deliverables. In addition to the generic objectives or to the generic business questions, we now have more and more detailed questions that marketing mix modeling needs to address, especially in an era where marketeers need to have more and more granular results. For example, what is the synergy between my digital and offline media? What is the synergy between my promotions and my media activity? What is the direct and indirect impact of my offline media? What is the short-term impact of media? And what is the long-term impact of media? How can I obtain more granular results and more cuts when it comes to the performance of the different campaigns, the different creatives, the different ad formats, or the different day parts that I have used as part of my campaign? So here we are getting to the nitty gritty of the execution of certain campaigns, and brands are requiring to have more answers when it comes to that. So this is what we call the specific questions that marketing mix modeling needs to address. And because we are getting into the specifics, that's why it's very important that we design a project that is able to deliver an answer for every single questions that I have mentioned earlier on. Business case one, D2C client. This is the case of a direct-to-consumer client that were experiencing a loss in their overall subscriptions. And they commissioned a marketing risk modeling project to shed more light onto the drivers of this loss and use the results in order to reverse that trend and make sure that they can improve their performance going forward in the future. Let's have a look at the business questions that this D2C client had at the start of the project. Identify the key submissions drivers, compute the contribution and the cost per acquisition for every single channel, look at the synergy and indirect effects, evaluate the impact of competition, compute the non-media and external factors impact, and finally, optimize media budget allocation. To answer all the business questions that we have outlined earlier on, we had to devise an architecture or a methodology that allows us to do so. Now, because the client was interested in understanding the synergy between pairs of variables, we used log linear modeling to achieve this. Also, some of the questions related to the brand impact, and that's why we have nested the brand index into the main sales model. Now, when it comes to the metrics used, depending on the variable, we have used different metrics. For example, for all the digital channels, we have used impressions. However, for branded search, we have used clicks. Now, when it comes to television, we have used GRPs. 
And for outdoor, we have used data about the number of panels. Now, in terms of the transformation we have applied to these variables, we have used a combination of ad stock, diminishing returns, and also weighted sum. If you are interested to know more about these transformations, I invite you to visit our Season 2 Marketing Mixed Modeling Masterclasses, where we elaborate more on each of those transformations. Based on the architecture that we just described, we were able to devise an interactive map and to estimate its impact. We were able to measure the direct and indirect impact of many channels. Let's have a look at this. As you can see, and depending on the channel, we have measured different types of impacts. Let's, for example, focus on TV, generic page search, branded page search, influencers, emails, and promotions. These factors only had a direct impact on signups. However, social media like Facebook, Instagram, audience network had both an indirect impact and a direct impact. The indirect impact was described as follows. These social media were influencing indexed search and in turn, indexed search had an impact, a direct one actually, on signups. Other variables like TikTok, YouTube and Snapchat only had an indirect impact on signups. This is the case of a CPG brand that wanted to understand the reasons behind the drop in sales. That drop coincides with a change in strategy when it comes to their product portfolio. And they wanted to understand what was the impact of that change on their overall sales and how can they make their marketing budget work harder in order to achieve a better performance. To address all the business questions that we just described, we devised the following methodology. So first, the data we had was monthly data, meaning that if we model at the national level, we would be running out of degrees of freedom for getting a robust measurement. Lucky for us, we have obtained regional data and we have pulled all the data using the regions in order to expand the data set we have and achieve a more improved robustness of our results. Second, because of the synergy effect that our clients were interested in, we have used the methodology of log linear to account for this. And in terms of data transformation, we have used a combination of ad stock, weighted sum, and also diminishing returns, lag effects, in order to transform the set of marketing and media variables we had. One of the insights we were able to deliver as part of this project is the optimal execution range by media channel. So deriving the diminishing return curves using the S-shaped curves, we were able to determine what is the maximum marginal ROI and what is the maximum ROI. And we have discovered, for example, that for the channel that you see on my screen, that the optimal execution range is between 15 million impressions and 30 million impressions. Currently, the client is within that range, given that they are executing 19 million impressions. We have done this for every single media channel, and we have also devised a map where we have showed them the ROI and the saturation as a matrix, so they can decide what are the media channels that they should be investing in based on the size of the ROI and also the size of the saturation. Thank you for watching our videos. I hope this video was particularly useful to you. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.